Welcome to another episode of the Waffle Shop Podcast. Today I'm joined by probably what I can already tell is going to be one of my new favourite people. It's singer-songwriter Delilah Montagu. Welcome to the Waffle Shop. Thank you for having me. It's an honour. Stop it. The honour is mine. I'm not going to do this, this compliment tennis. <laughs> the whole thing. It's <laughs> just batting them back. <laughs> No, honestly, I, it means a lot. Like, I have been a fan of your music for quite some time now. And it's your your music always puts me in the good mood. So the fact that I'm now sat waffling with the person who puts me in the good mood is, I mean, my face is aching from smiling already. So thank you for being <laughs> Oh, I love that. <laughs> but to be fair, before we carry on with, like, the niceness, I start each one of my shows with some, something called The Weekly Waffle, which is something quite minor that once I got it off my chest, it supposedly makes me feel better. It doesn't, but God loves a trier. <laughs> so Bye. the thing that has been winding me up this week, Delilah, is intrusive thoughts. Now, I know this quite, this could sound quite bad, but it happened to me today. I saw a keep off the grass sign. Now, any normal person <laughs> would I know that. it was one yeah would read it i mean i'm 33 for god's sake <laughs> sorry i was like keep off the grass so what did i do <laughs> i stood on the grass Kept on it, no <laughs> one at, literally for no other reason other than i wanted to yeah. and it's i mean half the time i read out these like we weekly waffles and stuff and the root of the problem is is me i'm fully <laughs> aware of that but um <laughs> i had to stand on the grass is there anything that gets on your nerves that you'd like to get off your chest today? Um, I mean, there are so many things that is <laughs> one. <laughs> um, I think the first one that comes to mind is because I've just moved to LA and I've been in London my whole life. And so I've just been, I'm used to just like walking around, like walking, for example, okay, this morning, my girlfriend's in Italy, so she's away. She's the driver of the family because yeah. I haven't got my license yet because I'm being really lazy. <laughs> so usually we go and get a coffee in the morning. So it's, I don't know, 10 a.m. And I haven't been able to get a coffee because I didn't <laughs> want to walk for like an hour to get a coffee. And I'm really annoyed. <laughs> that's, that's my biggest complaint <laughs> today. So your I weekly can't waffle like, is also I you. Like, <laughs> it's being lazy and in multiple ways, not wanting to walk and not wanting to learn to drive. It's just like, I can't win. <laughs> it's, a, it's a vicious cycle. It really yeah. is. But to be I, fair, I I would, I, I get that. Because it's those minor, them, those small little things, isn't it? That you kind of, you really enjoy. Like it might not just be like the drive to get the, the, the like getting the coffee. It might be that little moment when you, the drive to the coffee. It's the drive. I mean? it's, yeah, it's the experience. It's the experience of the coffee. Or it's the like, in London, it's like the 10 minute walk. Yeah. And it's like an hour. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't know if I have it in me. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm like, yeah. like, Uber eats a coffee. And then it's like $30. And I'm just, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a no can do. Do you know, I feel like this is a whole nother conversation. With this just this kind of throwaway generation that we're living in it's but we we do it we all do it <laughs> it's literally too bad i'm showing myself up here no we all do it don't you worry now i was going to launch straight into kind of like your musical journey but i can see something in the back of the camera which to me looks like a grammy oh my god you know <laughs> that arrived to this morning it arrived and I've just done an Instagram post where I think I'm being really funny I'm like I'm pretending to like it's a person it's really stupid and then I just put it up there and I've just realized it's like I look oh, like how, how did that get that no I I have a I have a book about anxiety on my shelf so who's winning <laughs> yeah. so funny. Cool. That... <laughs> <laughs> who's who's winning here because it's, it's not me. Because <laughs> I have anxiety. I didn't have a book about it. <laughs> well, I also have anxiety and I don't have a Grammy. Um, but do you know what? 
fair play to you. It's so well deserved, especially to be fair, that is how I discovered you um on that song with obviously Black Coffee, David yeah. Getter, Drive. It is it is one of those tracks that really transports me away. Like I don't know what it I don't know if it's just like it, it just sounds like a holiday. Yeah. Just, yeah. I, I, well, how okay, as a starting point, how did that all come about? Um, it's kind of a funny story. So I got so I got sent a demo of this song, and it was kind of like not fully done, but it was almost yeah. there, and it was like this dance song. <clears throat> and usually I don't usually I write all my own stuff, and I'm also not I don't I wasn't I wasn't doing dance at that point. Yeah. The person who sent to me was just like, just try and like cut a vocal on this. And I heard the song and I was like, wow, I am obsessed with this song. And it kind of, it kind of, it almost introduced me to dance music myself. Um, and I messed around with it, like changed some of it and did this vocal, sent it back. I had no idea what, it, I thought it was maybe like demoing out or like asking me to write a bit on this thing. And then a week later I get a call and the guy's like, yeah so black coffee and david get to love it and they want to have it and i was like and he purposely yes. didn't tell me didn't tell me the kind of context i think because i probably would have just panicked <laughs> like <laughs> no <laughs> um, and so and yeah and so it kind of it all happened remotely and i didn't meet either of them and then you know as time's gone on i've worked with them both and they're just like the most incredible human beings and black coffee is like one of my favorite people Oh my god! Oh. From a producer point of view, one of my favorite of all time. He's, oh, he's just incredible. His son's incredible. Like that, the whole family—they're just like good people and talented people. And yeah, it kind of turned out to be this really beautiful honor, really, to be able to be involved in it. Um, so yeah, it's incredible. Like, and I'm throwing the gratitude to you because obviously you were a huge part in making that happen so thank you for that it's generally soundtracked some parties for me some walks and some of those kind of days for me when I've been in a real kind of bad headspace and it's mm -hmm. like as soon as I hear that do 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 I'm like oh my god okay here we go here we like, up. <laughs> yeah yeah I'm ready I'm ready you you mentioned there about kind of being introduced to dance music and I'm assuming, not to be fair, listening to your music, I get a lot of soul and kind of a lot of nostalgia through your voice and through like the work that you create. What? How did your journey into music start? Like, because obviously I've had people on the show that said like it's been a a gig they went to or a certain artist or you know that's introduced them to it. Like, how did that journey start for you? So, both of my parents, um, they're not musicians, but they've got like immaculate music taste and so throughout my childhood I mean in my opinion obviously but like throughout my childhood I was listening to Leonard Cohen, Fleetwood Mac, Carole King, Joni Mitchell all the time um, and it I don't know something in my brain just it touched me so much and I remember yeah. when I was like five I like forced my mum I was like you have to buy me a guitar she bought me a guitar and like ever since then it's just been I've just been writing songs because for fun you know like I never even realized it was a thing or like a job or a career or any of that I just for me it was a fun pastime to just and then force my mum to listen to every single song I'd like run into the living room and be I've got another one you have to listen to <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean they must be looking at it now thinking like well do you know what thank god we bought her that guitar <laughs> yeah look at me now definitely and I'm like yeah thank god I was an only child and had loads of spare time and thank god my mum was she was incredible she didn't let me watch tv she wow. I grew up in a very bohemian village called Forest Row where it was so a lot of artists and we had an annex and we'd have a lot of musicians and artists who were traveling through the village to stay with us and so i'd end up playing like spanish guitar with them and it was a very creative kind of connected to nature childhood and i'm so grateful wow. for that because you know it do you was... know what's really 
interesting with that like I, I see it a lot with the newer kind of generation like where I grew up before the time of social media and I still remember sitting in the park till I was like eight nine no until at like eight nine o'clock playing like Pokemon or you know like just just playing and just without care in the world whereas now like it's it, it scares me a little bit to be fair that whole kind of behind the screen stuff but it scares me too because I don't think I would have I think it's so instant on the phone mm. and stuff on the TV I wouldn't have had the patience or the because in a way it's work ethic without realizing it because you're yeah. honing in on a practice but it because it was so fun I just was doing it but if I had something else that was more fun and more instant I don't I wouldn't have done it so I think it does it scares me too but I guess hopefully it will we will evolve around technology but I don't know it's inevitable isn't it it's like I always this kind of conversation always reminds me of Jurassic Park it's that like yeah. saying isn't it? it's like life finds a way yeah like it's you can fight it all you want but it's it's gonna happen <laughs> exactly <laughs> So from a, you know, like growing up, obviously you had the guitar and obviously the, you know, the musical kind of creative like influences, like practically in your back garden, like growing up, what kind of made that leap into like, actually, do you know what? I've got something here. Like I need to explore it. Well, I, so I went to school and I was always the kind of music one, you know, yeah. in my year. And then I left school when I was 17 and I moved, I moved up to London. My mum's got a houseboat and I kind of was living on this nice. little houseboat in Hammersmith. It was really fun. And I decided to take a gap year and then go, I think I was going to go to Bristol or something, uni to study, uh, study, study English. And in, in that gap year, I, my friend was playing at the Troubadour and I was like, oh, I'll support you. I supported him and then somebody I think filmed it like an a and R. I didn't know I didn't even know what an a and R was <laughs> filmed it and then Sounds the next medical. Day, yeah, it was it, yeah, like science lab something. <laughs> and then the next day I got an email saying can you send us demo demos and I had literally no idea what a demo was so I got my phone and I got voice memos and I recorded me playing a song on the piano and then sent it to this guy. And then the next day it was just like, you know, when it things kind of the word spreads, I guess. And yeah. because there were no demos, it was just this one song. It was the intrigue was like, oh. And so I kind of fell into signing a record deal and getting a manager and it all happened really. I didn't even think, oh, this is a thing <laughs> just kind of came and I was like, oh. <laughs> Well, I imagine it, it must be quite surreal, though, because to, from especially doing something that you've always done. You know, it was a huge part of your childhood. You know, you, you've loved it from a very, very, like, early age to then now all of a sudden be like, oh, this is my job now. Honestly, it's the weirdest thing. And it's it's a beautiful thing, but it's also, it comes with, I think, a lot of challenges that I think a lot of musicians face because it's this thing right where it's my solace it's my soul it's my diary it's my therapy mm. and suddenly it is being seen in a very outward facing way and i'm a product and i'm having to promote it and i'm being told opinions on it and it's is a very weird thing emotionally for sure who said I'm just going to turn my fan off because I think every time I speak, I think the mic's picking it up. Oh no! There's, there's two seconds. <laughs> that warm in here. Um, you mentioned now, obviously, the music being like a huge part of you, like being your solace. Obviously, there's a lot of soul that goes into it. I find it really interesting, especially when I have like a musical guest on the podcast. How much of their kind of heart, their soul, their pain, their their joy goes into their their music or lyrics or whatever it might be as kind of like an outlet you know yeah. is is that something you'd like do you go through like a, maybe like a tough time or even a good time like I, I need to get this out of me in the form of music 100 percent. it's the only way I know how to wow. express how I feel and process how I feel 
and the way I write usually is I get I put voice memos on and then I just start playing or playing the piano and just singing random stuff and then as I'm singing lyrics form and it's so interesting listening back because I'm like oh my god that's how I'm feeling about this thing in my life you know I'm like that's really my truth because it just comes out and it's yeah it's how I do it really I imagine it's quite like a diary entry then Hun- yeah totally totally that's so incredible yeah it's really interesting has there ever been, uh, like been moments where you've kind of you know you've done your thing and then you've kind of like you've parked it a little bit and then come back to it and be like either in a much better place because of that or been like oh you know I didn't think I was going to get through that but look at me now oh my god 100 percent. so I mean all the time <laughs> <laughs> I'm literally, literally all the time and it's it's weird. It's like, it's like a past self almost, especially when you're releasing music publicly and like people are hearing it and, you know, they're sending fans are like sending you things at them with it. And maybe it's like a year later and I'm like, Oh my God, like, I love that, but I don't even relate to that person in the same way as, or I like, I hear the song in a different way and it means something new to me than when I wrote it. Cause I wrote it about this breakup and I'm going through this breakup, you know, it's like, it's amazing. I love how music does this to people like it's much fair I'm just like a consumer of music I have no musical <laughs> talent whatsoever um but it's, I find it so interesting but to be fair you're speaking of kind of about the lyrics and like feeling different there's a song that I do need to ask you about and it's your song loud and I don't know obviously the the behind the scenes or the inspiration for that song but there is a lyric in it that really kind of obviously I'm very open about like my mental health journey on the podcast obviously it's the reason the podcast exists um but for some reason I related this to my mental health and my anxiety and especially especially and it's the lyric that says I can't keep running away can't keep letting you stay and there's there's been Mm. moments where I'm like I'm kind of sick of feeling this way but then it's kind of like I need to do something to get rid of it or I need to do something to kind of cope with this kind of thing and I don't know obviously what the song is about but I just wanted to kind of run that past you I guess (laughs) oh it's so amazing that you say that because that whole EP um I is all about my mental health so wow um, okay yeah yeah the project that that song is from is um a project that's probably like my most vulnerable one um there's a song on there called version of me which i think is probably like my favorite song it's probably my closest to my truth that i feel every time i hear it even i'm just like oh ouch (laughs) but um the whole yeah the whole project is kind of about being different people to everyone and about anxiety really and addiction and codependency and like how it's so difficult but I run to it yeah. and then I run do you know what I mean it's like it's it's like a vicious cycle so it's um yeah it's amazing you say that because most people think that's a love song but it's not wow oh god look at me Vin. I'm doing well here okay. yeah, <laughs> I'm know, reading right? behind the lines <laughs> um yeah no it, it really does and to be fair now I know that I think I'm going to go back to that EP and like kind of just really kind of let it kind of like out of me because I mean I love I love these kind of conversations um baby though is just I honestly think it's my like song of the summer already I don't know what it is about it 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 literally it's like I've heard it before in the nicest way possible it reminds me of one of those songs that has just lived with me like my whole life tell me about it because it is ah I love that I wrote yeah so that project the song that that project's from was like the funnest summer of my life and I just basically wrote a bunch of songs with um my friend Benji who's like incredible and he's um actually Fred's brother and Fred helped with the baby song too he produced with Benji and it's like yeah that 
whole project especially that song is just like I don't know I was like fresh out of a breakup I felt so free I dyed my hair red I was just living my best life and I just the whole project is all about it conceptually it's about one night so like you meet somebody out and then you go on this crazy road trip and you have this crazy time and then the last song on the project is like about the next morning and you wake up and you're like wow this is I actually kind of want you to like stay in my house because I think you're really cool but like <laughs> yeah baby come from the, the midst of that just being like oh my god like just call me baby all the time it's great <laughs> <laughs> I could literally talk to you all night about this. I imagine like your playlists are just incredible. <laughs> I never. <laughs> I know too bad. Lots to kind of put a dampener on it now, but obviously there's a few things that you've you've touched upon. Obviously, you're very open when it comes to like your like your mental health journey and stuff like that. And like especially now, like obviously you, you mentioned anxiety. Other than music being a coping mechanism, is there anything else that you kind of? lean towards or when things get a little bit manic that you kind of throw yourself into um recently I've been running which is like I cannot believe I'm even saying that because I'm not I've never really exercised but my anxiety has been really high recently I think moving to a new place um is hard because it's like you know you need to feel safe and grounded yeah. and I think that when you don't when I don't my anxiety goes up um running and then i've been doing this meditation course on headspace which has been quite good um what else i bought us a bar i love it the man's (laughs) voice i think he's my husband (laughs) in another life every (laughs) (laughs) if you just sat and read like the phone book i'd be happy oh it's just incredible. I just, yeah. He's I'm here like tonight. I'm oh, joking. He's, he, no, I wish he was. Just to, Imagine. You know, you've got to get him on your Yeah, I'm going to try now. <laughs> have no waffles. He'd just be like. <laughs> if you got a random Zoom link sent from me one day, don't join it because it's just going to be me and him just like. <laughs> Surprise, Delilah. It's. <laughs> Yeah. Here to officiate the wedding. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, I love oh no, to um, me though, I I love that because it's the first. Sorry, I just completely jumped over that. Then you, basketball hoop. Oh yeah. Oh right. Yeah. Well, I just bought us a basketball hoop, and I do that sometimes. But yeah, that's kind of. Oh, I have a bath. Like the simple things, I guess. Yeah. They don't usually they don't work. <laughs> <laughs> this is the beauty of this oh, podcast. Oh, though. <laughs> Let's talk about coping mechanisms. None of them work. Um yeah. <laughs> none of it gets any better. <laughs> if anything it gets worse. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Can't even stay off the grass. Um no, to be though, I, I love God. hearing <laughs> about <laughs> people's coping mechanisms because obviously that's how I've kind of found what works for me. Because it was always it's always that kind of conversation is that it's very difficult to kind of talk about these kind of things, um, and I think you learn more from the connections, the you know the kind of the conversations and stuff. So I'm, you know, it, the simple things just as talking is the biggest one. Mm. Mm. Oh my god, yeah. I mean, talking about it and sitting for me, it's like sitting with myself and almost talking with myself and being like, I had this yesterday, I went, I was in a session and just before I went in, I suddenly was like, oh God, you know, when you can feel it coming on, I was just yeah. like, oh God, here we go. And I just sat and I just was like, it's all right, like, like it's gonna be, I kind of checked in with myself, I like felt my feet on the ground and I kind of, you know, and then slowly like within that kind of half hour, it, it just kind of went away, yeah. but it's, because yeah, I feel like with that, for me, with the anxiety, I just lose total connection with reality and with myself and with like the fact that actually I'm totally safe, everything's okay. And I just go into this panic of like, oh, I need to leave this situation. Um, so yeah, I guess that's been a big thing. It's me. powerful though. I think it's it, the senses, isn't it? Like the, what I found whenever yeah. I have panic attacks in the, 
um in the past it's okay what can i see what can i you know hear what can i taste all those kind of things and it's just really kind of centers yourself to like actually you know it's, it's going to pass like i'm i'm safe even though my body's telling me i'm not i know i'm going to be safe totally if there was, I mean, I, I do this uh, regularly now, like if there was anyone having a bit of a tough time at the minute, like what advice would you give them? Do not give up on whatever you're doing. Listen to your body, like listen to your gut. Um, it's going to be okay, I promise. <laughs> Go online and look at go online and look at listen to the waffle podcast and also there are so many other incredible like that's another thing that I love and that's kind of why I loved your podcast too is that I end up finding podcasts or interviews with people who feel the same way as me and I'm like oh I'm not weird and I'm not alone in this it's just the best um and yeah just it's it's genuinely going to be fine like it sounds insane when you're in it, but it will be okay. <laughs> you are honestly phenomenal. Absolutely. Phenomenal. I knew this was going to be a good one. I've had a smile on my face all day. <laughs> I was even an hour early. <laughs> I, know, I know. I saw that other thing and I was like, oh, whoops. <laughs> like, oops. <laughs> just, just very eager. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, with obviously the summer kicking off, with there's festivals left right center is there any plans to get out there i mean i'm speaking specifically about quite a big one that's happening next week which for the first time in my life i'm attending is there any chance that you might be there you know what sadly i'm staying because i've just i've literally just moved to la so i'm essentially giving myself a year and I'm just, I challenged myself at the beginning of this year. I was like, just stay put um, because I'm, you know, trying to settle and build a foundation. So I think that um, I was meant to be coming to, show, uh, to London for some shows. Sorry, not London, UK. Um, but I've, yeah, I've pushed it back because I think I'll feel, you know, when you don't feel grounded and if I then go home, to my you know and then i'm doing all this stuff i probably will feel very anxious about the fact that my new home isn't fully formed yet so sadly not but they're going to be amazing i mean glastonbury is going to be incredible i know i've never been before but as much as i am gutted i'm a huge advocate for giving yourself what you need so i respect that a lot just go to fred's set and you'll see my face on the screen well this is kind of what i was hoping for I was like, it's okay. I'll make friends with Delilah, then I'll get to oh, see her on the stage. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but to be fair, I wasn't going to bring this up until kind of near the end. But honestly, Delilah, you have probably been a part of some of the, for me personally, some of the best dance songs of the past like five, 10 years. Like they've just stuck with me. I, but obviously, we need to talk about, obviously, Delilah, pull me out of this. Like, it is an absolute monster. I didn't realize it was obviously lost keys. Yeah. And then I went, obviously, I didn't, I heard obviously the what Fred again did to it. And then I heard lost keys and I was like, oh, and then the acoustic version. I was like, what is she doing to me? <laughs> <laughs> it is hands down one of the best dance tracks of the past 10 years, easily. It is phenomenal. Thank you. How? <laughs> T tell me. Come on. Tell me. Well, so, so funny. So Lost Keys was on the project that Baby was on. Um, and I wrote that with Benji about having a panic attack in a club. So I was like, essentially, I was out in a club with my friends. And then I just felt super anxious, came home. Um, and we wrote that, we released that, and then Fred heard it. I think Fred, yeah, Fred like kind of rediscovered it like six months after we released it and was like, oh my God, this is, I don't know, he was really sweet. And then it went on this incredible journey of him being a genius and going through all of these amazing phases with it and then finally coming to 
pull me out of this. Um, and yeah, it's just been such an incredible experience because as we were saying, it's like, you know, a song that I wrote feeling anxious and not wanting to be around anyone. And then it's being played in these clubs and there's like hundreds of thousands of people together. Clubs, you've got Coachella, <laughs> like yeah. next week will be Glastonbury. It will be literally it, the soundtrack to people's summers, like is it's a monster <laughs> <And it's just laughs> impossible. It's, just, it is, it's so tricky for me with the like and then the it's so funny because the clip he plays live of me that's just me i like just got out of a bath and i posted it on instagram like ages ago and i had if i had had any idea that it would be do you know what i mean i probably would have <laughs> Think that <laughs> did, did he give you the heads up before he used it? He gave, me that, he gave me the heads up, but I had no idea the scale of I'd know because I had no idea if it was even going to be a single, like because the way that he does it is through the public, right? Yeah. So he does teasers and he's like, which one? And so I, I just had no idea if it was even going to make the album, let alone be such a kind of impactful song. So it's yeah, it's all just been a bit of a trip. Very weird. Do you know what I find really incredible, and I'm not going to get all serious with this, but it just shows how much good can come from those bad experiences. That song was born, what, from a panic attack to now it is making people dance, sing, like be the happiest versions of themselves from something that you created. It is so beautiful. It's, it is it says everything it's like again feel the feelings and write about them and talk about them and you never know like they can like the 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 messages i get are just every day are like they literally make me cry because it's like you know people saying how much they can relate to it in such a special way it's just beautiful it's really beautiful i feel very lucky to be involved it's incredible, honestly. Do you think, I mean, this is just it, this is popped into bed. Do you think you could do the pull me out of <laughs> go on, Here. Yeah, go on, go on. Pull me out of this thing. Oh, stop it. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> the goosebumps. <laughs> okay. So I I have three final questions for you. And you know, you've created a song now that gets me on the dance floor, but I want to know, Delilah, what gets you on the dance floor? Oh my God. I mean, the like Boogie Wonderland is a banger. Um, Fleetwood Mac, any Fleetwood Mac song. I'm, it just makes one I'm, spin in the circle. Well, even the slow, sad ones, I'm like, I'm dancing to that shit. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Probably the oldies, oldies like that. They don't make them like they used to. They don't make them well, like you they... do. To be fair, you, you're still making those absolute. Come <laughs> on, yeah. That's when I'm... need to be making more. <laughs> oh, yeah, bring them back. On the flip side of that, then obviously I know you say like you connect with music on a web, where you create music like that. What songs or albums kind of put you in the feels, or you know, pulls the emotion out of you? Um, Leonard Cohen, Famous Blue Raincoat is one of my favorite songs. Okay. Carol King, Tapestry, that whole album I've actually got, you can't even see it, but it's there. It's, that's like my heart and soul in an album. Wow. Yeah, it's, you should, I recommend anybody to listen to that album, please. It's really good. Heard it. It's but it's, you've said it now, so it has to happen. Yeah. This is a bit of an interesting question with this one, especially because obviously you being a musician yourself, is there a song that if you were to put it into a box and just kind of kick it into the ocean and never hear from it again, what song would it be? As in a song that's been released? Yeah. <laughs> So many. <laughs> I always literally, I always find this question so interesting because I literally see someone like their eyes and then like the cogs start turning then to be like, 
oh i've waited for this one. <laughs> yeah literally oh god there's one i mean you know it's my pet peeve and i think because it was so successful it's become more of a pet peeve but i think it's called old town road <laughs> I'm going to take my horse. <laughs> <laughs> it, it makes me upset for some reason. <laughs> I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> That's all I needed. That was it. <laughs> to be fair, I, I don't know why. Yeah, this is a question that's just popped into my head. One final question, I promise. Is there a song that you wish you wrote? Beatles, all of them. Uh, let it be um uh Suzanne Leonard Cohen wish I'd written that Georgia on my mind oh, one of the best one of my faves um so many most of the songs I love I go into this I, I fantasize for like a good however long about how oh imagine if I'd written this <laughs> 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 and then I'm like oh life would be so great <laughs> the, your time will come your time will come like the music that you are creating now it's literally like you've been on this planet for like 80 years like Good. and i'm for one i'm genuinely i'm a huge fan of yours and i'm so excited to see what comes. can you tell us what's coming next or yeah so i've got i've yeah i've got a um new project coming out very soon the, probably this summer the first single um and it's kind of going back to basics a little bit like fleetwood mac kind of oh sold good yeah yeah that's it that's all you needed to say <laughs> honestly <I'm> an... <laughs> you have been an absolute dream to waffle with honestly like i genuinely i'm not just saying this like up there with one of my faves because i've i feel i felt so comfortable like i feel like i know you even though i've never met you and yeah please just keep creating the music that you're creating because it's generally even if it's just 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 for me, it's, just, it's genuinely making it's... me smile. <laughs> Thank you. No, I've loved this, and I love your podcast. It's just incredible, and I'm honored to be on it. <laughs> well, you can have to come back for round two now when the new stuff comes out because I need to kind of dissect it all. Yeah, let's I might do just it. do that. Just just like dissect every song you ever put out. Like, well, this made me feel like this. In fact, this sounds so narcissistic now. This, this You're getting stuff. it right. You're getting it right. I was surprised with the, with the loud thing. Oh my gosh, someone's actually got it. I take that as a compliment. Thank <laughs> you so much for joining me for a waffle. It's a pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs>